In previous video, we had discussion on Kirchhoff's laws, that is Kirchhoff voltage law and Kirchhoff current law, which are the basic laws in electrical circuit analysis. In this video, I will discuss mesh analysis, which is actually application of Kirchhoff's voltage law. Previously, when you had done the analysis of circuits, it was by use of Kirchhoff's voltage law as well as Kirchhoff's current law to all together. But in this method, we will be using only Kirchhoff's voltage law along with the Ohm's law. To understand that what is mesh analysis, we need to understand first that what is mesh. So we, mesh is actually an independent loop. Now what we mean by independent loop, to understand this, let's consider that we have the circuit consisting of two voltage sources and three different resistances. This is a circuit. Now in this circuit, A, B, C, D, A, this forms, this path forms one loop. If I assign these as E, F, B, E, F, C, D, this one is the second path we can say this is second loop and a b e c d a is third loop now out of these three loops first loop a b c d a this is an independent loop since it doesn't contain any loop inside it similarly b e f c b this is also an independent loop so these two are actually meshes while the third one A, B, E, F, C, D, A this contains two loops inside it so it's not an independent loop so this is not a mesh so what we can say that all meshes are loops but all loops are not meshes So first step in mesh analysis is identify the meshes in circuit. This is the first step. Now in this circuit we have identified that there are two meshes. This is the first mesh. This one is first mesh and this one is second mesh so there are two meshes now instead of assigning the branch currents which we had done in the previous video what we do in this mesh analysis we actually assign mesh currents so as we are having two meshes so we will assign mesh currents let's say first mesh has current I1 second one has I2 now the direction of these mesh currents that is assumed arbitrarily you can assume both the currents as out as clockwise anti-clockwise or one in clockwise direction second one in anti-clockwise direction so here I have assumed that both the currents they are clockwise so second step is assign mesh currents clockwise anti-clockwise 
or combination of both it's your choice because if our assumption is wrong then we will get the answer in negative value so it doesn't matter in that which direction we are considering next step is apply kvl to each mesh so we have to apply kvl to meshes only not to loops so if i consider this circuit then mesh 1 and starting from the source as negative sign is coming first so i am writing minus v1 now as per the direction of current through r1 this is the polarity of voltage so positive sign is coming first the drop across this r1 is i1 into r1 then we have resistance r2 i1 is in downward direction so this is positive terminal this is negative terminal plus now we need to check that what's the current through this r2 through r2 we have two currents i1 is flowing in downward direction while i2 is in upward direction we want the resultant current in downward direction so in downward direction resultant current will be i1 minus i2 since both the currents are in opposite direction so it will be i1 minus i2 into r2 equal to 0 this is a equation of first mesh as per kvl then moving to mesh 2 in mesh 2 i am starting from resistance r3 as per the current direction this is positive terminal this one is negative then v2 i we know the polarity now we need to mark the polarity of voltage drop across this r2 as per the direction of i2 since i2 is flowing from lower to upper terminal so this lower terminal will be positive and upper will be negative and we will be writing the voltage drop according to this this is because when we are applying kvl to any mesh then we consider the voltage drops and voltage rises of that loop that mesh only or we can say that loop we are not concerned about that what was the polarity in the first mesh because this is on the basis of our assumption so i will start with the drop across r3 plus sign is coming first so plus i2 into r3 then moving on to v2 again positive sign is coming first plus v2 then we have drop across r2 plus drop across r2 now we want the resultant current in the upward direction so resultant current in the upward direction will be i2 is in upward direction i1 is downward so it's i2 minus i1 into r2 equal to 0 so these are the two equations which we need to solve simultaneously and that will give us the value of i1 i2 if we know the values of all resistances and the value of two voltage sources so you need to take care of the polarity of voltage across the resistance which is common to two meshes so what we can see over here that the polarity of voltage is opposite in two individual meshes in first mesh b terminal is positive c is negative 
in second mesh c is positive b is negative so you need to take care of this thing while writing the mesh equations so this is the simple case we will solve the numerical problem based on this mesh analysis in the next video before moving on to that video i am considering one special case of special case in mesh analysis let's say we have same circuit with only one change and what is that change that instead of voltage source here we have current source with value i1 again we need to identify meshes so we have two meshes we have to assign a mesh current to each mesh as we have already i1 so i will write this one as ix to differentiate it and this one as iy so we can easily apply kvl in mesh 1 i am marking the priority of voltage drop across each resistance according to mesh 1 plus minus as per the direction of current plus minus as per the direction of current so mesh 1 equation will be minus v1 plus ix into r1 plus ix minus iy into r2 equal to 0 and when we move to mesh 2 this will be the polarity of voltage drop across r3 this will be the polarity of voltage drop across r2 but when we come across this current source we don't know what's the voltage across this current source since we don't know what is the voltage across this so kvl is not applicable because in kvl we have to write the voltage across each of the circuit element now we need to see that what we get from this second mesh in second mesh in this branch we have a current source which is supplying current i1 and mesh current is i1 since it is a current source so cur so the current source in this branch that will remain same so what we get we are getting one answer of directly one of the mesh currents is directly known to us that is equal to current supplied by the source so if we have a current source in outer branch of any mesh then we will get the answer of that mesh current directly so i will consider the numerical based on these two cases in the next video